In the last lecture, we learned how the JavaScript program is passed, compiled, and executed by the JavaScript engine. But we learned about the execution of JavaScript program on a very high level. Now, let's go in a bit depth of how the JavaScript code is executed by the JavaScript engine. Now, remember that the JavaScript code is executed inside JavaScript engine's call stack. A call stack is a data structure in JavaScript runtime environment where JavaScript code is executed in last in first out manner. A call stack consists of execution contexts. So before we understand call stack, let's first understand what an execution context is. An execution context is an abstract concept, but we can say that an execution context is an environment inside which a piece of JavaScript code gets executed. It's like a container that stores all the necessary information about a function or a piece of code like the local variables, the arguments, etc. Let's understand what is an execution context with a simple example. So here we have a function and we are calling it get account details. This function is taking two parameters, customer ID and name. And inside this function, we are also creating two constants, bank and branch. And then we are logging the details like customer ID, name, bank and branch. So for this function, this customer ID, name, bank, branch, these are the informations. These are the parameters and variables which this function is creating. Okay. Now, when this function will be called, in order to execute this function, an execution context will be created. As we learned, an execution context is nothing but it is like a container which stores all the information about a function. And this execution context gets created whenever a function is called. So we are calling this get account details function here and there we are passing the value for the customer ID parameter and the name parameter. So when this function is called, an execution context for this function is created. And this execution context is going to store all the information about that function. The information like the parameter values, the variable values, the inner function, etc. On a broader term, we can say that execution context is nothing but it is a piece of memory. This piece of memory stores all the information about the given function, like for example, the value of its parameters, the value for its local variables, a reference to its inner function, etc. So for this example, for this get account details function, when the execution context has been created for this function, it is going to store information like the parameter values. So the parameter values which we are passing for this customer ID and name that will be stored in this execution context. As I said, it is like a piece of memory which stores all the information of a function. So this function is taking customer ID and name parameter. So the value which we are passing for them will be stored in this piece of memory. Then inside this function, we are also creating these two variables, bank and branch. So the values which we are going to assign to them, that will also get stored in this piece of memory, in this execution context. And then the code of this function will also get executed in this execution context. And in this way, for each function, an execution context gets created and it gets executed in the call stack. And the execution context is going to store all the necessary information for that function, like its parameter values, the variables which we have created inside that function, the inner function declarations, etc. So again, an execution context is a piece of memory. It is like a container which stores all the information about a given function. And the execution context for a function gets created whenever that function is called. This is very important to understand. The execution context for a function will only get created when the function is called, not before that. So this is execution context. Now we learned that an execution context gets executed in the call stack. A call stack is like a temporary storage unit for keeping track of function calls. And it follows a last in first out structure similar to a stack of plates. Let's try to understand how the execution context gets executed in the call stack. For that, here I have written a very simple JavaScript code 
in this code first we are declaring a global variable called name and then we also have global functions like first function second function and third function so this name variable and this first function second function and third function it is declared in the global scope these functions and this name variable it is not present inside any other function or inside any code block so these functions and this name variable it is defined in the global scope now when we will run this javascript code in the browser first of all browser will compile this javascript code into machine code and after the compilation is finished javascript engine will start executing this javascript code and as we learned a javascript code gets executed inside an execution context so first of all we will have a call stack inside this call stack each execution context will be executed and here consider this box as the browser's developer console where we are going to log the outputs now we learned that every time a function gets called for that an execution context gets created and in that execution context that function gets executed but what about the code which is not present inside a function for example this name variable it is not present inside a function this first function also it is not present inside any other function and same is true for second function and third function so remember that for the code which is present in global scope which is not present inside any other function for that javascript engine creates a global execution context and this global execution context stores all the global variables and functions and all the global variables and functions are executed in this global execution context so in this execution context all the top level code that will be stored and executed so in this example we have this name variable which is present in global scope and we have this first function second function and third function declaration so these three functions and this name variable it will be stored in the global execution context where they will be executed as you can see in the global execution context we have a name variable which is storing this value john we have this first function which is pointing to the function definition of first function then we have second function which is also pointing to the function definition of second function and we have third function which is pointing to the function definition of third function now here this first function second function and third function it is going to store a reference to these function definitions because as we have learned these functions are of reference type so they will be stored in the heap memory currently we are in the stack memory so since this john is of value type this name variable is going to store that value but first function second function and third function these three are the identifiers which is going to store a reference to these function definitions another point to remember is that in javascript project no matter how big it is there will be only one global execution context where all the top level codes all the global codes will be executed and it's always there as a default execution context which gets created as soon as your javascript program starts running so in the beginning only the codes which is not present inside a function gets executed the code present inside a code block for example inside an if block or for block they will also get executed in the global execution context only if they are not present inside any other function or any other code block even the code block which we create using simply curly braces that will also get executed in the global execution context if they are not present inside any other function now once the execution of top level code that means the code which is present in the global scope is finished finally function starts to execute as well now in this example what we are doing is after creating this name variable and declaring this first function second function and third function we are calling the first function and as we learned when the first function will be called an execution context for that function will be created so first of all the control will go to the definition of the first function this function is called and since this function is called an execution context for that function will be created so now this execution context for this first function it has been pushed on top of the global execution context in the call stack and now this first function execution context is the currently executing execution context because now the execution for this first function will start so this 
first function execution context it will be the currently executing execution context now when the execution of this first function will start in this execution context first of all inside that we are creating a variable so as we learned the variables or the inner functions which we declare inside a function that gets stored and created in the execution context of that function so here the variable a is declared inside first function so this variable a will be stored in the execution context of first function then in the next line we are calling second function so when we are calling second function again the execution control will go to the definition of the second function and since the second function is called an execution context for the second function will be created and it will be pushed on the top of the currently executing execution context so the currently executing execution context was first function from the first function execution context we are calling the second function so now an execution context for second function has been created and it has been pushed on top of the execution context of first function and now the second function execution context is the currently executing execution context so now the code written in the second function will be executed again in the second function the first thing which we are doing is we are creating this variable b so this variable v will be stored in the execution context of second function and then in the next line we are calling third function and since we have called third function an execution context for that third function will be created and it will be pushed on top of the execution context of second function and in this way as you can see we have created a stack of execution context here we have a stack of execution context and that's why this is called as call stack now in the third function the first thing we are doing is we are creating a variable c so this variable c will be created and stored in the execution context of third function then we are also creating this variable z and assigning it with some value so this variable z will also get stored in the execution context of third function and finally here we are also calling this console.log function and console.log is also a function which is provided by web api but since it is a function for this function also an execution context will be created to this console.log function we are passing the value of z variable so that will be passed and it will be stored in the execution context of console.log function and now the console.log function will execute and once it will be executed the job of console.log function is to log something in the developer console so here this console.log function is going to log the value of variable z in the developer console and now the execution of console.log function is complete and since its execution is complete the execution context of console.log function will be removed from the call stack it will be popped off from the call stack okay and now we are back to the place from where we called the third function and since the execution of third function is also complete the execution context of third function will also get popped off from the call stack okay and with that since the execution context of third function is removed from the call stack in that execution context we were storing the variable c and variable z so that means the variable c and variable z which was stored in the execution context of third function that is also removed from the memory all right now we are back to second function and in the current line what we are doing is we are creating another variable y and we are storing it with some value so that variable y will again get created in the execution context of second function which will store the value which we have assigned to it and then we will move to next line in the second function there again we are calling the console.log function so an execution context for console.log function will be created to that console.log function we are passing the value of variable y so that value will be stored in the execution context of console.log function and the job of console.log function is to log a value in the developer console so in this case it is going to log the value of y in the developer console and in this way the execution of console.log function is complete so it will be popped off from the call stack so as you can see the execution context which was pushed last it gets removed first and that's why we say that 
call stack follows last in first out approach right now the control will reach back from the place where we called the second function and in this way the execution of second function is also complete so now the execution context of second function it will also get removed from the call stack and with that the variable b and variable y is also removed from the memory because it was present in the execution context of second function now we are back to first function and there we will move to next line in the next line we are creating a variable x so this variable x will be created and stored in the execution context of first function we move to next line from where again we are calling the console.log function so an execution context for that will be created there we are passing the value of x that value will be stored in the execution context of console.log function console.log function will do its job and it will log the value of x in the developer console and then once its job is complete once the execution of console.log function is complete it will be popped off from the call stack right now we are back to the first function from where we called it and since the execution of first function is also complete the execution context of first function will also get removed from the call stack and with that the variable a and variable x which was stored in the first function that will be removed from the memory and now we are again back to the global execution context so each time when we call a function it gets its own brand new execution context and same is true for methods also because at the end a method is nothing but a function which is attached to an object so when we call a method for that method also a separate execution context gets created it gets pushed to the call stack where the execution context for that method is executed and once the execution is complete it gets popped off from the call stack so in this way we have executed all the three functions and we popped them off the stack when the function returned when the execution of function completed and now we are back to global execution context again now this global execution context will remain in the call stack as long as your javascript program is running this global execution context will only get removed from the call stack once you close your program as long as your javascript program is running even though the code is already executed the global execution context will remain there in the call stack so once you close the browser tab where your javascript code is running this global execution context will also get removed from the call stack and now your program has been stopped it has been closed so the global execution context is removed from the call stack one more thing you need to understand is that when you are running your javascript code in the browser that means your javascript code is attached to some html file and when that html file will be rendered in the browser with that html file the browser is also going to execute the attached javascript code right now whenever you will refresh your web page that means the html file will be reloaded in the browser and when the html file is reloaded in the browser that means the javascript files will also get reloaded in the browser so those javascript files will be executed again by the browser and when that javascript code will be executed again each function will be executed again for each function the call stacks will be created again and there the execution of the functions will happen and everything will start from zero all right so in this lecture we learned what is an execution context and what is a call stack and how an execution context gets executed in the call stack now in this lecture we did not focused on how an execution context gets created we just learned what is an execution context what information it stores and how it gets executed in the call stack but in the next lecture we are going to have a deeper look in the execution context and we will understand how an execution context gets created and how the information which we are passing to a function that gets stored in the execution context this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day